So what brought you here today? Because I'm a psychiatric survivor and I'm just grateful for my life. I'm grateful to be free from the influence of psychiatry and psych drugs. It's doing great harm and um, I want people to become aware of that. And also because I'm inspired by the work of others who are trying to support people who go through that process of trying to extricate themselves from psychiatry. My personal experience, obviously, it makes people incredibly less resilient to life's challenges. It cripples them. It makes them childlike and, and defenseless against uh, handling, handling life. Is that your experience or what happened to you? Yeah, it is. Personal experience learned a very long and hard way. Are you excited so, to be here? I am very excited to be here. Have you done these protests before? Yeah. No, no. So how do you feel? How do you feel it's going to go today? It's going to go really well. Really? Yes. How come? I think when any group of people gather quietly and peacefully, they feed off that energy and that energy feeds the atmosphere in a way that's different. That's how you make change. It's one person affecting another person slowly at a time. You never know who you're going to reach, who's walking by on the sidewalk, who needs to hear exactly what you have to say at that very moment in their life, who's, you know, on their way to an appointment with a shrink for the first time, uh, first appointment, and they hear something that one of us has to say and they decide, you know what, maybe maybe before I go that way I'll, I'll try another way. You just you never know who you're going to reach. I've been off psych drugs for two years and ten months. How's that been? Incredible, wild, just fantastic. No, no hospitalizations or anything? No, that's ridiculous, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dig it. <laughs>What are you doing? I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. Okay. We're going to protest the American Psychiatric Association. Why? Because they do some horrible things. Like? I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. You don't what, know. What, this what, what, you, you, you have to know if you're protesting them. You can't not know. Well, actually, I'm documenting the protest. I will so protest. I'm trying, okay. I'm trying to be neutral. That's okay. fair okay. enough. Fair I can, enough. I can do. I'll Here. record you. Wait, here's a pen. You want to record me? Yes, I do. Okay, go for it. You can tell, I'll tell you my opinion. You can ask me any questions you want, in fact. Here we go. So what are your opinions on psychiatry? Psychiatry, uh, I think it's based on a lot of fraudulent science. I think they way over-prescribe drugs. Yes. I think they don't a lot of times know what they're doing. They give out all these silly diagnoses that a lot of times don't really mean anything. All anyone needs is just someone to talk to. Like, what are we doing now? It's exactly. We're like, just having a conversation right, and it's great. Talking to people is good, but giving drugs out for nothing is not good. Drugs are not candy. Psychiatrists uh, should just not candy. Hold on. Here's the thing, though, candy. is that drugs are candy, but they need to be administered at a... Regulated. Yes, regulated. regulated. But that's what the psychiatrists do. They regulate it. Do they, though? They just, hand out, they just hand out. They just hand out like refills, like it's nobody's business. <laughs> I honestly think that psychiatrists shouldn't give out the amount of pills that they're handing out because they're. It's not. There's a. There's not an illness. There's not a sickness. There's not a medical reason why they can argue it all they want. But the fact is that you're talking to a healthy person Here's who the thinks that they're sick. Here's and the by thing. giving them money or giving them prescription drugs, no, you're like just hurting the person that you're helping. No, not even that though. Is that in Afghanistan twice now. The pharmaceutical industry you know, is just like forcing drugs no. down everyone's throat. And, and no way. the problem becomes like everyone is accustomed to that. You know, it's like, oh, I have depression, let me go get some Xanax because, you know, I'm so uptight. No, you don't need Xanax. You need to fucking face your problems head on like a man and deal with it. Well, that's where psychiatrists come in. Psychiatrists should open you up to that point, but they shouldn't have to do it with a medical book, with a prescription pad. You need to get the person talking to get their problems out so they can face them yeah. instead of just forcing it like Pushing it if down with drugs. If the more, yeah, if you're depressed, you shouldn't need a medical prescription pad to tell you that you need to come out of your shell more. All drugs That's a self problem. That's not a problem that can be handled with a prescription pad. Okay, yeah, I gotta find my friends. Yes. I didn't even All right, know good luck. That was fun. Thank, Thank you. Good Daniel, good Daniel, luck. Daniel, Daniel have a good one. Yes, Daniel, take care. Hey, good luck. Guys. Activism make, uh, energizes me for one. Two, um, psychiatry is killing too many of our people. Although there may, may be well-meaning psychiatrists, it's, it's more like an industry and it's hurting children and youth.
There's no more talking about your issues, or emotional support, you know, what happened to therapy? You know? <laughs> um, so, and I'm here to be with my peers. <laughs> be their voice for them. As a teenager, I was uh, in the system and I didn't really have a voice. I wasn't treated fairly and I just feel that we need to give people a voice. 25 years ago today, I organized a similar protest at the APA meeting in New York City. We were only 12 mothers. It was Mother's Day at that time. We were 12 mothers and one male. That particular meeting was the launching pad for clozapine, the first of the so-called atypical neuroleptics, which they call antipsychotics. The APA promoted the drug as a scientific breakthrough in the treatment of schizophrenia. Those drugs, though, as we all know now, and there are so many of them, the Zyprexa and Risperdal, and Seroquel, and they keep on coming. Those drugs are both unsafe and untherapeutic. They have produced terrible, irreparable damage to the body and the brain of those who have ingested them for any length of time. Even some psychiatrists have begun to turn back. Uh, so what brings you here, Peter? I'm happy to support my friends who are uh, trying to uh, point out what's going on with psychiatry and continuing to do that over many years. Does it feel strange being a psychiatrist and being here? No, it feels reasonable. Totally. Because there's no, uh, you, you, it's, it's not about which side are you on, you know, it's, it's you, you, you're working, you're trying to help people, you're not trying to help psychiatry. I'm not a psychiatrist to help psychiatry. Psychiatrists who work with people who want to work, uh, change things, including themselves. Hey, thanks for coming. How you doing? Yeah! Woo! Tell the American Psychiatric Association no more. No more. Ho ho! More psychiatrists have to go. I think it's, this is fabulous. It's more than we expected. We usually have uh, demonstrations and we don't have a lot of us out here. But because of all of these different issues, uh, Stop the Murphy Bill, Forced Electroshock, Forced Drugging, the things that are continuing to happen and we're in 2014, people come out. Who are some of the people that have been murdered? Little children. Rebecca Riley. Two years old when she was started on, on neuroleptics. I don't call them antipsychotics. They don't have antipsychotic principles for many. Yeah. Rebecca Riley was started on these drugs when she was two and dead by four. I was hospitalized uh, years ago in the 80s, uh, involuntary uh, commitment. You were just someone who, you know, didn't matter, who wasn't a human being. And that's how I felt, and I really needed to get away from it. But I had some really good helpers that helped me get where I needed. But it wasn't until I found the consumer survivor movement that I really changed my life. Esmond Green. The only reason we know about Esmond Green is her death by psychiatry was caught on film. She was in the emergency room for, what, 24 hours without being seen, collapsed, and people, the staff just walked by. One person even kicked her. I grew up believing, you know, my entire life that there was something wrong with me, that I was damaged, that I was sick. Um, and through becoming involved in this movement, I've created a new identity for myself um, beyond the labels given to me by psychiatry. What would you say your new identity is? Well, um, one of them is Roller Girl, Mazel Tov Cocktail number 18. Um, <laughs> that's my roller derby name. You're a roller derby person? Yes. <laughs> 
How good are you? Um, that was one of the things that saved my life. Um, I'm a jammer, so I'm fast. Um, and it was never put in a treatment plan for me, incidentally, during all my hospitalizations. It is time for us, as a collective human family, to shed the chains of psychiatric oppression and reclaim ourselves. For you, psychiatry, have power only because we've given it to you. Just make sure we don't get arrested. Everybody in the street. It's a threat to them because it it's goes against everything that they've been learned in school and it's a threat to their livelihood and that's a huge, a huge thing to overcome for someone. When I was a teenager, I was locked up for three long years. Forced to undergo combined insulin and ECT, drugging, seclusion, and restraint. My 17-year-old roommate, Susan Kelly, was killed by the ECT and the insulin. It was unspeakably horrible. It was torture. I have been speaking out for over 35 years, and I'm here again to tell you this must stop. Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Poor psychiatry's got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Poor psychiatry's got to go! I'm more and more motivated to be uh, a part of uh, getting the word out that psychiatry has some things pretty messed up, needs to change, needs to get its act together, and first do no harm. So what brought you here today? Um, I'm a, I'm a, I consider myself a, an electroshock survivor. Um, also a prisoner of psychiatry probably for 22 years. I was diagnosed at 18. Uh, told I was sick. I took lots and lots of drugs for a long time and then was electroshocked. I had my memory destroy basically it's done something to my emotions I'm not sure I think it's disconnected my 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 um, frontal cortex from my emotional system or something because I feel strange and out of it and not myself at all <laughs> How did you find the protest? I loved it. I am so glad to be here today. It was fabulous.